Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Welcome everyone to Jim and Java, where your fundraising and development questions are answered each week. It's always a pleasure and a joy to take a few minutes to answer one question each week. And I hope that if you've got a question that it doesn't scare you or intimidate you to put those down in the comments section or to uh, go out to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Dava, or also make sure that if you've got a question, you can always go and email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. I've got a video coming out soon that will talk about tips on how to work with donors over the summer. You know, I got an interesting statistic the other day that was revealed to me that 70% of those people who watch this show regularly do not subscribe. So if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do so because the more subscribers we have, the more this message is going to get out to our community and be able to interact with others. And the more people that are involved, the more we can share ideas and have community together. Let's dive right into our question of the day. Our question today is from Shana in Las Vegas, Nevada. And Shana asks, I know that utilizing volunteers is important, but how do I recruit them? Well, Shana, thank you so much for that question today. Uh, I've always said for the longest time that the three key areas are public relations, recruitment, and fundraising. Those three areas are essential to your development efforts. So that recruitment aspect, that those human resources, those people who commit their time to your organization are some of the most important and valuable. Certainly, there are full-time staff and part-time staff for your organization, but it's those volunteers that seem to be the real backbone or the heart and soul of your organization and what you do. So recruiting those individuals is extremely important. There's a variety of ways that you can recruit volunteers. Of course, start initially with those people that you know, that board members know, or that others involved in your organization know. Be very proactive. Take the initiative to name storm names of individuals who you feel like would be great volunteers. Be sure to list everyone who has been involved in the past and anyone who has a heart and a passion for your mission, vision, and values. Go to the uh, areas that are very similar to what you're doing. There may be individuals who have a heart for where you're at, but begin to be very proactive, especially with those individuals that you know, in challenging those people to be involved. I've found that it's often that people, they struggle with trying to find the right things for individuals, for volunteers to do, but it's also dealing with those time commitments that your volunteers may have. The timing might not necessarily be in sync with where you're at. They may have freedom in the afternoon or at evenings. You need volunteers in the morning or vice versa. You might also find that some of the people have skills in areas such as accounting, bookkeeping, in um, public relations, and those, in, those aren't necessarily duties that you may need or want volunteers in, or vice versa as well there too. They, uh, you may have needs in their area and can't find volunteers in there. So before you start to challenge people, put together a list of responsibilities and activities that you need. Things as simple as folding, stuffing, sealing, a letter and stamping letters to putting um, uh, receipts into, uh, into envelopes that you might have. Those activities may need manual labor. And so you've got to make sure that you've got someone that doesn't have a problem with doing manual labor. But then there's also responsibilities and duties where you may have, where you need someone on the phone. And finding someone who has good phone skills is extremely important. So making sure that you match the duties and responsibilities with the gifting, the talents, the interests that people have, that's extremely important. But remember that as you do activities, 
you want to begin recruiting volunteers at those activities. If you do a walkathon, a jogathon, if you do a vision dinner, those kinds of things are tremendous times to be able to recruit volunteers. I wouldn't confuse it if you're going to be asking for money because what happens is that sometimes people will choose the option to volunteer rather than give. I would rather have someone be given an opportunity to, to give first and then follow up with a volunteer opportunity or you could put volunteer opportunity cards on the table. But those are also great ways to be able to recruit people at events or activities. When you have speaking engagements, whether that be social groups, community groups, uh, events that you do at churches, look for and recruit volunteers. Put a list in the back or give people a link to be able to go to your website or an offshoot of your website. Create a landing page specifically for volunteer opportunities. I've helped a number of nonprofit organizations and social services organizations that have benefited greatly from creating their own specific landing site and landing page specifically for volunteers. So I would consider doing those kinds of things. Volunteers, Shana, are an important part, and it seems like you understand that. The biggest thing is what it will take to recruit those volunteers. And it's important that you give volunteers opportunities, you list for them what positions are open, that you are proactive in asking people, not just putting it out there that you need volunteers, but specifically target individuals and ask them if they have some free time that they could help your organization. And again, making sure that your timing is in good shape as well too. So Shana, I hope that helped with your question. I hope that helped all of you listening and watching this video as well too. Once more, begin to recruit volunteers as quickly as possible. Also, on this channel, be sure to subscribe. Please hit the big red subscribe button. It costs nothing to subscribe, but it helps us in every aspect of growth for this channel and bringing the best information possible to you. We're getting such good feedback on our Instagram channel, Dev Effectiveness Strategies, and also uh, on uh, our Facebook group, Development Effectiveness Strategies. So until next time, this is Jim Dempsey wishing you the best, and I hope to help you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. See you next week. See you also in the next video. Take care.